Are you new to DaVinci Resolve 18 and don't know where to start? Well, this video, I'm going to be showing you the 10 key things that I wish I knew when I started editing in DaVinci Resolve. Don't worry, I'm going to save you a lot of hassle. Let's go. All right, then, starting with number one, audio auto alignment. Now, this is something that I wish I knew from the get go. As you can see in my timeline, I have two separate clips, each one being an individual camera angle, recording at roughly the same time. Instead of going through this and just manually aligning this, what you can do is select all of this, right click and scroll to auto align clips. You can either align based on time code or waveform. And that's it. That's how quick it is. All right, then. So the second thing is the ease in controls infusion. Now, I knew where these were but I didn't realize how easy it is to customize them so as you can see I've got some footage and I've keyframed a transform node where it zooms in let's select these keyframes and add an ease in and an ease out now before I used to just go and select this and try and manually drag it but the problem with this is if you don't get it right it can look like this so as you can see it's a bit weird and a bit bouncy not what you want for an ease in and an ease out zoom but all you need to do is select these keyframes click T and then these hidden ease in and ease out controls appear I don't know why DaVinci Resolve all have these just hidden by default but you know now you know they're there and when you've got them selected you can just drag it and it gets an accurate ease in and out curve made instantly all right number three is transitions now i massively underestimated the transitions i thought when i saw them at first that they looked a bit stock they look a bit rubbish they look like windows powerpoint transitions but oh boy was i wrong as you can see in the transitions folder there are various ones to choose from some of them are a bit cringy some of them are a bit weird for example the oval iris Put this on your footage and in a minute it does look a bit weird but if you go over to your inspector tab where all of the controls are for this transition you can customize the ease in and the ease out you can create a border like so and all of a sudden this transition looks really really good you can apply this logic to all of the other transitions and they're a lot more customizable than you might think i do wish that i'd actually looked at this a little bit further earlier on now i use them almost all the time all right so talking about transitions my fourth bit of advice is actually setting transition presets to do this all you need to do is right click on your transition and as you can see it says create transition preset click this and you can just name this whatever you want wow amazing transition click OK and then scroll down and find it and boom you have your preset amazing moving on to number five I, th I think I do struggle to count after the number four and that is the noise gradient now if you're sick of this let's say blue background as you can see you can make things that are very very simple very quickly to make but look really really cool and that's where noise gradient comes in seriously guys I wish I knew this a long time ago all you need to do is go into your toolbox and search noise and then noise gradient will show up. Drag this into your timeline and from here it looks like blurry fog or blurry clouds. But that's all right because this is where we customize it. <coughs> As you can see, there's loads of default things. We have like a fiery effect. That looks pretty cool. We have this lightsabery effect. Again, really cool. And there's just, there's loads here that you can mess around with and you can customize everything. I've literally made this in literally three seconds. Whack some text on top of this or some images and you're off to the races. Number six, editing at lower resolutions. Now this is something that I wish that I knew back at the very start when I was but a baby and my computer was very, very slow. Just go up to the top right corner, click on playback and click timeline proxy resolution. Selecting quarter basically means the computer is working four times less hard than it otherwise would at full resolution if your footage is, let's say, 4K. Do bear in mind that any rendering place that you make when it's set to quarter resolution will render that thing in place at quarter resolution. It's a little bit annoying. I wish DaVinci Resolve will fix this, but let's move on to number seven. Let's go. Now, this is another Fusion one. So let's jump into Fusion. All right, then, so number seven is in the Fusion tab now i don't know about you guys but when you're in the fusion tab creating loads and loads of different things you can get a little bit lost as to what thing is what and what keyframe is for what but there is a way and there is a solution for this as you can see i've got a few things in my node tree with various different bits of keyframes on these transform nodes if we go over to this transform node and select it and then go over to our other keyframes now i don't know really which one it is all i need to do is click on these three dots here click show only selected tools and this will just show what we've got selected in the node tree I 
I showed editor Steve this, this guy, definitely this man, at work, and he was amazed. All right, then, so number eight that I believe I'm on, I don't really know, is Smart Bins. Here I have the timeline for my last video, the Edge Detect tutorial. Feel free to go and watch that. I make videos every week, you know, so, you know, subscribe. This can save you an awful lot of time. If you go over to your Smart Bins, which is located in the media pool, don't worry, if you don't have Smart Bins showing, that's fine. Go up to the top corner of your media pool and click on the three dots. There should be a tick down box called Show Power Bins and Show Smart Bins. Click to Show Smart Bins. Right click in your Smart Bins area and click Add Smart Bin. Name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to call it Footage Used. Go over to File Name, click down and click on Usage. Click Is and then click Is Greater Than and then type zero. Create this Smart Bin and now everything that you've used in your timeline will show up in this bin, which means that you can check if anything's offline just by scrolling through this bin or use this just for various different instances. The next point is the DVE node infusion. So here I have a simple screen recording from my last video. If we control shift infusion and bring up our selection tool and search DVE and create a DVE node, this means that we can simply create and zoom in, let's say this much to the car and move it up like this. We can really, really simply create a 3D effect on this screen recording and we can just simply keyframe it like so, like this, and then boom, we have a simple 3D effect done like that. Really simple. There are other ways of doing this, but this I find is the quickest, most simple and least intensive way that you can get this simple effect. And now for number 10, or at least I think it's number 10. I've lost track completely. I don't know how to count to 10. It's a long story. I didn't listen in school. Eat your vegetables, kids. Now this is arguably the most important thing. And when you start in Resolve, for some reason, it is turned off by default. And you're probably asking, what is it, Dan? Well, it's project backups. Now, I can't tell you enough. At work, I've gone through three computers. They've all just exploded and died. But project backups have saved my projects over and over and over again. And I didn't realize they were there at first. Go up to the top right corner of DaVinci Resolve. Here you'll find preferences. Click on preferences and I'll open this little window. Go over to user. Now this is your user settings. Just scroll down to project save and load. From here, this is turned off by default. So it should look like this. Or at least I believe it's turned off by default. When I got a new computer the other day, I was editing away and I thought, hmm, I should check the project backups because I set it up on my last computer and lo and behold, it was grayed out. Now I usually have it set up to two minutes. I think by default it's 10 minutes, might be wrong there. Make sure that this is there because you never know when your computer is going to die. All right then, so that is 10 things that I wish I knew when I started in DaVinci Resolve. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it was 10 things. If it isn't, let me know in the comments and rage about it, the fact that I can't count. My name's Dan, you've watched Dan Vinci, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.